Hey guys, welcome to virtual exchange number 12. Uh, we are in the kitchen here at EBC. And uh, as you can see, we got many ingredients and cooking tools and all this stuff here on the prep table. Uh, we have, uh, we're making a delicious dessert today for some very particular judges who you'll meet later. Um, and it's, we actually have one verse that we're gonna talk about today. And it's a really tasty verse. Uh, so let's jump to that and then we'll jump into making our secret dessert here. All right, Psalm 34, 8, if you have it, grab a Bible. Today I'm reading out of the ESV, um, Psalm 34, 8. It says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So we're reading David's words in the book of Psalms, or one is called a psalm. So Psalm 34, in context, David was on the run, uh, and he was running for his life. He was hiding. Obviously, the situation in his life was not ideal, and you probably wouldn't think it was ideal either if you were being chased around and hunted all the time. So David's running for his life, and as he's running, he takes some time to write down some words. Psalms are kind of like uh, journal entries or lyric sheets or whatever. And so David is writing down some words. And he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And the people in David's life would be like, David, why would you say that? You're getting hunted for your life. Like, people want to kill you. Why are you saying that the Lord is good? God's clearly forgotten about you. But David in the psalm tells us why he praises the Lord. In a couple verses ahead, he says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me and heard me. Uh, he, heard, he delivered me from all my fears. And those who look at him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. And then he says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who seeks refuge in him. So why is David praising God? Because God has delivered him. He, God has shown himself to be faithful. And here's the thing. David can say, taste and see that the Lord is good because David had tasted God's faithfulness in his life. Whereas the people who were questioning David, they had never tasted God's goodness in their life. It's hard to, to, it's hard to understand something if you've never experienced it. So like we are about to make an apple pie that will rock the judge's world. But if you've never tasted apple pie before, you might not like it. In fact, you would say, ooh, those cooked apple, ugh, like what is all that? But when you taste it, it changes your perspective and it changes your experience that you understand what apple pie is like. The same is true. When we experience God's faithfulness with spiritual eyes, we can never forget that. When we taste God's mercy and His grace towards us, we can never forget. And that drives us to a posture of praise, just like David. That's why I think it's really funny that the first word of this verse is oh. Oh, like you take a bite of something that's really good and it's like, mmm, that's good. It's the same in our spiritual lives. When we experience His grace and His mercy and His goodness, then we can say, mm, the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in Him. When we seek out God to be our, our protector, our provider, and our salvation, the thing that we cling to, he, we take refuge in Him. So for those of you who are watching today who have placed your faith and trust in Jesus, you're a, a follower of Jesus, you're a Christian, then you have sought refuge in Him. You have tasted God's goodness. 
And if you're not a believer and you're watching this today, maybe you haven't understood God's goodness completely. Your eyes haven't been opened. You haven't tasted His goodness because you've never experienced the forgiveness that Jesus provides. And you can have that today by simply praying and asking God to forgive you of your sin, to repent of that, to turn away from that sin, and to put your faith and trust in what Jesus accomplished for you on the cross. Then you will taste and see that God is good. So I don't know what you're going through in your life today, and I would challenge you if you are struggling in a place where you're like, God's forgotten about me. Go, go to a quiet place and write down every good thing God has ever done for you, and you will see and remember what God has done, and you'll taste and see that He's good. So, we're not only tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, but we're also going to taste and see that this apple pie is going to be amazing. So I got my stuff here, uh, an apple slicer. This is easy to push down and slice the apples. We got, we got some back there. Uh, of course, we're going to need some butter. We're going to throw some of that in there. Uh, some cinnamon and, and all that stuff. Uh, we got some of this. We got some, uh, some baking powder, so I'm going to put some in there and dump that. And then we got some, some oil and some other good stuff. Need some, some uh, water in there. Got that. And uh, going to mix all this up. Now, you're always going to need one of these to serve up some pie a little later. And some people really like this stuff. You can use it or not. It's your choice. And of course, it never hurts to have one of these in the kitchen to cut up apples or to cut other things like pie. So we're going to whisk this up here. We're going to mix up our ingredients. We're going to throw it in the oven and see what happens. Let's throw it in the oven and see what happens. Let's see what our judges have to say. Wish me luck. Granny Smith apples. Ooh. Did you use salt instead of sugar? Ugh. Very grainy. Oh, this caramel is swill. It's like sewage. Ugh. What has happened with this crust? Too, it's flimsy. And oh, I just cannot even partake even of a moment of this. Oh, I may have to go to the restroom. Okay. All right, apple pie. I'm quite excited about this. My first observation is the presentation is quite lacking. Someone needs to learn how to cut a pie properly. Hopefully the taste will be better than the appearance. I like my apples a little browner. Let's, oh, that's the knife. Let's see. It tubes nicely. Nice crunch, not too mushy. Let's try this crust. A little flimsy, but overall a good flavor. I've definitely had worse. So if we could step up the presentation a little and maybe a little more sugar, yes. Overall, pretty good. All right, I am excited about some apple pie. I don't even know which one. I'll just use this spoon. I love me some apple pie. I hope this is good. I hope it is. Let me see. Let me see. Oh. All right. That is some good stuff. Let me see. This, this, this is so good. Ah. Uh, uh. 
No, no. I love it. This is the best ever. No, oh, no. Oh. Hey guys, why don't you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this chance to have some fun in the kitchen, but also to look at your word and to be reminded to taste and see that you are good. And that those of us who put our uh, refuge in you, that we seek out you for refuge, for, for safety, for protection, for provision, God, that, that we are blessed even when it doesn't make sense to the outside world, even when outsiders don't understand what we're trying to do and living for you, God, that, that you would make us lights for you. Uh, that they would see us praising you for your goodness and that it would draw others to you. And Lord, thank you for being so good to us. And Lord, help us to always remember your faithfulness and Lord, help us to not let the taste come out of our mouths of, of your goodness. And Lord, um, we praise you, especially for your provision of Jesus and what he accomplished for us on the cross. We love you, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen.